All right, well, thank you very much indeed. If you can just take your seats, we're going to start the last session of the day. And I know it's been a very long day. I know there's been a lot of discussion. We've asked you to do some homework. You've had a chance to talk quite a bit. But now we're going to actually have a chance to listen to the Secretary General of the International Maritime Organization give us his view about where the industry should be heading. After that, I will be asking him a few questions. And if any of you have any burning questions, this will be a moment to jump in too. And then you'll be pleased to hear we'll be heading for the drinks and dinner tonight. So it's my great pleasure to invite the Secretary General up to stage um, to give us his vision about where the maritime industry is now heading. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Chilean, uh, for the uh, nice uh, introduction. Thank you. And congratulate to your excellent uh, uh, moderating uh, today. Uh, excellent. Uh, chair, <coughs> Chairman of the Mr. Stoker, and the excellencies and the distinguished participant and ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon to you all. Uh, it is a great pleasure for me to hear at the Global Maritime Forum, and I'm sure that this will be an insightful and thought-provoking event. Also, I'd like to congratulate the organizer <coughs> and the government of Hong Kong for the successful forum. It is, as you know, an inaugural one so I started the first time uh, the, the, the background uh, to start this uh, inaugural session from the, uh, the, uh, that uh, time organizer, the preparatory, uh, doing preparatory work. So I saw that uh, UDA give a big opportunity to shipping industry and uh, the regulating community as a whole so that we can get together. So I see a big uh, merit by observing uh, today uh, this uh, uh, forum. I'm, I'm very confident that this will be uh, more successful in the following years. The main area being explored in, in depth during this forum are decarbonization and the digitalization. I'm sure that you agree with me on how these topics are key, present and the future of shipping, where I am more of a course plays a pivotal role. I must start it this year by celebrating two significant milestones, 70 years since the convention forming IMO adopted and 60 years it entered into force. To mark this uh, achievement, <clears throat> our theme for this year, our heritage, better shipping for our future. That looks both at the past and into the year that lie ahead providing an opportunity to reflect and showcase how the organization has developed and adapted while staying true to its overall mission to promote safer, secure, environmentally sound, efficient, and sustainable shipping. You may be familiar on how environmental issues are high on the global agenda. And at IMO, thanks to our well-established collaboration and the cooperation hard work and dedication, we added another milestone to this special year of celebration. With the historic adoption last April of IMO, initial strategy for reducing greenhouse gas emissions from international shipping. I cannot stress strongly enough how significant this is. For the first time, there is a clear commitment to complete the phase out of GHG emissions from ships a specific linkage to the Paris Agreement, and a series of a clear level of ambition, including at least a 50% cut in emission from, sector, from the sector by 2050. Here, I'd like to make the first direct contribution of the work of IMO with one, the main topic of the, for the forum, which is decarbonization. The adoption of the initial stress marks not only a positive outcome of IMO, but emphasizes further the contribution of our industry to the society as a whole. 
it marks the beginning of further work and efforts from the organization to fulfill its expectations of looking forward toward the future into more sustainable maritime sector. At the present, at this moment, I would like to express my deepest thanks to the uh, member states, all member states, and the IGOs, NGOs, and the industry for the patience and the collaboration and the cooperation. In particular, I would like to express my deepest appreciation to industry for sharing vision and the cooperation. Since uh, 2008, uh, the financial crisis, there has been a slow market, still a to some slow market, and the always shipping industry suffering uh, overcapacity. Under that circumstances, even though we had uh, some serious discussion before, until we reach a uh, consensus, but I see very positive uh, mindset and very positive effort from industry in order to contribute positively to the development of initial strategy. So I'm deeply myself moved and touched by the effort by industry. Despite the initial GHG strategy being adop adopted the last year, it is important to recognize IMO has already been working on several other environmental area to further enhance our already clean and green mass transportation sector from technical operational measure to new and the noble ship design and equipment. The most recent one is the forthcoming reduction in the global sulfur content in ship's fuel oil, referred to IMO 2020. The first of January 2020 has been set as the date for reduction in sulfur content of fuel oil used by ships from 3.5% to 0.5%. This type of decision are key contribu contributor to improve both the environment and for the human health. I'd like to take this opportunity to reiterate that the implementation of a date, IMO 2020, 1st of January, will not be changed. So the important thing now is to ensure consistent implementation of the 0.5% sulfur limit. Technology, of course, play a pivotal role to the future of a global regulatory framework. Here is where I'd like to highlight the second strong link between the work of IMO and the second important topic of the forum, digitalization. The next 10 or 20 years will likely see as much change in shipping as we have experienced in the past 100 years. New concept will revolutionize how ships are designed, built, operated. We are already engaging on new subjects such as marine plastic litter and the microplastic as well as ocean governance. We are encouraging and involved in action with other entities to assist in fulfilling our environmental commitments, such as onshore power supply as well. On the safety aspect of IMO, which let's not forget is the primary activity of the organization, we are already carrying out a regulatory scoping exercise to address autonomous vessels, including any potential security-related aspects, such as cyber threat. We approach all these new trends and development in the context of a global efforts toward achieving United Nations 2030 agendas for the sustainable development and its goals. Part of it is our proactivity in addressing the challenge and opportunity presented by so-called the fourth industrial revolution, digital revolution in all aspects of its work. We need to ensure that benefits offered by these new and emerging technologies, which would help us meet the objective of most of our regulation, these can be fully realized without compromising safety, security, and environmental protection. Ladies and gentlemen, I am maybe 70 years old, but we continue to demonstrate 
our relevance and contribution to sustainable growth in a way that meets modern society's expectations about safety, environment, and social responsibility. Increase the communication and the collaboration between shipping, port, logistic industry will be vital to enhance efficiency and the sustainability of shipping. I exhort you all to continue to break new ground and demonstrate the best spirit in the interest of maritime community and the future generations. The initial IMO GHG strategy is not the final stage, rather a key starting point for more and the bigger successes to come. All major ship owners have a clear responsibility to set the positive example for others to follow in terms of compliance and implementation. I'm sure that you will apply your insight and experience to ensuring that happens. Let me conclude by thanking the organizer again of the Global Maritime Forum for the opportunity to contribute to this dynamic event and to congratulate them on the bringing together many important leaders and representatives from all areas of a shipping community to discuss such important topics and for focusing just like uh, IMO in the future of shipping. Again, I'd like to wish this uh, conference, very inaugural uh, conference, and all present here every success and prosperity. Thank you for attention. <laughs> well, thank you very much indeed, Mr. Gitag Lim, and congratulations on the 70th birthday. Um, you've laid out a bold vision of where you hope to see the industry go, um, not just in 2030, but 2050. You've laid out some ambitious environmental targets and you've painted a picture of very rapid change, the rise of autonomous ships, self-driving ships. When do you expect to see self-driving ships as a matter of interest? Uh, actually, uh, we started the uh, discussion and the study about that, but actually uh, it takes uh, some more years until we see uh, like driveries, um, high level of autonomous ship, but uh, there is uh, a moving step by step on that, uh, to, toward that direction with the technological development. Well, it's going to be interesting. Do you think we'll see self-driving ships before we see self-driving trucks? <laughs> but, you know, uh, as you know, uh, the ship, a ship is uh, much bigger, more complicated, so it takes uh, some more time, including a legal aspect, including a financial liability in case of accident is a huge issue, so that's why it, we expect it takes some more time. Oh, it's going to be very interesting. But I'm curious, so you've laid out this very bold vision. What do you, from the IMO, expect to do to try and support this vision? Do you think you have the structure and the resources you need to drive forward this vision as a key international regulator? Uh, actually, uh, <clears throat> main key tool is a proper communication because all regulation decision is made by member states on their own decision and uh, we reach a certain, certain consensus. So uh, when it comes to the IMO, there has been a good uh, culture promoting encouraging communication and uh, among stakeholders. Also, as I, as I was going to mention, but there has been a good level of uh, uh, the cooperation, I'm a member state and industry as well. So uh, our secretariat point of view and the member state point of view, we are having good level of uh, communication and also uh, getting uh, stakeholders involved more for the common issues. And what are you wanting to see from the industry in the next few years uh, uh. to support these goals? I mean, do you think the industry is doing enough to push forward um, the industry in, in, the kind of in line with the vision that you've laid out? Uh, actually, before I answer straight to your question, I have to mention, if you look uh, future at least 2030, 
main theme for the future development is the sustainable, sustainable development of shipping, sustainability. And the second one, universal standard and universal implementation, which is uh, very important. And uh, of course, uh, uh, by uh, making greener shipping and the most uh, the energy efficient uh, industry. So uh, sustainability of uh, shipping and the maritime industry and uh, the uh, universal implementation standard this is the most important. Having said that, as I mentioned in my the, uh, the uh, address, uh, we have uh, some uh, policy topics. One is uh, one of the most important one is that uh, GHG emission issues. As I mentioned, we adopted the inertia strategy uh, last April. It is uh, right, one of the important turning uh, point. However, we are talking this month about the action plan, how to make it by 2023, next one, 2030, and the future. So short, mid, long term. We have some option of uh, action plan, and we are discussing. So it, we, are, we are discussing real issues. There is a you know, climate change issue. Climate change is giving the biggest impact, like uh, technological development, design, and the engine efficiency issues, and uh, alternative fuel issues, and also operation issues. There are sep separate issues. So uh, we are going to have a much more in-depth uh, analysis and discussion about this one. Also, as I mentioned, we have some uh, alternatives like uh, the uh, autonomous ship issues mm -hmm. and more digitalization into uh, shipping. And also, you mentioned this morning, cybersecurity issues as well. So we, we have a different kind of challenges. But as I mentioned, how we can make this one you know, happen in the future. But what uh, we believe, decision is uh, made by the member state government. However, when it comes to implementation, we have to look up the position and effort by end user, which is industry. Yeah. So industry should be uh, well, uh, should understood about issues and uh, should be uh, uh, remain positively to these issues and the remain good communication among industry and the industry and the IMO as well. So that is a way we are uh, endeavoring more to make our the objective uh, you know, take place. Do you think there could be a role in introducing more transparency in terms of meeting environmental standards? I mean, there was some discussion in the plenary session, in the, um, session earlier about whether there could be some kind of radical transparency to enable investors and consumers to see which shipping groups are being green and which ones aren't. Would you support that? Oh, actually, uh, I really, myself as a secretary of IMO, as other uh, member states, we have very much support. More transparent discussion and more visible uh, visions that can be made based on good communication. Without good communication, we cannot understand you know, the other side, the sentiment, the other concern. So in that sense, I really, we really welcome participation by industry in the course of our discussion. So industry can represent by means of like, uh, as a representative of NGOs, or uh, by become uh, a member of the uh, delegation from member state. Apart from that, the IMO has uh, formally or informally maintained good communication. Point is that in order to make better realistic rules and regulation, there should be enough sufficient opportunity industry express their views and express the real situation based on real life of a shipping or shipping operation. It come from a ship manager from a shipping company, it come from seafarers, whatever it is, based on realistic situation, we make a sound decision. And also we can uh, secure support, 
contribution, participation from industry together with the member state. That is a which we are emphasizing uh, most. But you're not about to start naming and shaming groups, are you? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. Right. Mm. What about your role in terms of trying to promote better practice on cybersecurity? Do you think you have a role in terms of trying to coordinate the efforts to share experience on cybersecurity? Yeah, actually, uh, we have been talking about uh, more digitalization, more digitalization and autonomous ship, which definitely, inevitably, definitely get the cyber security issues involved, which is very important, which happened uh, some time ago. So in that sense, you know, uh, we have uh, two rules. One is uh, the cyber security issues can be dealt with the safety point of view, like a maritime safety point of view. Another tool is we have a facilitation convention and uh, committee meeting. Facilitation commenting, it deal with uh, like uh, information sharing, data sharing, mainly in logistic area. So we are very much concerned about cybersecurity. So uh, we developed already guideline for member state the industry, how to you know, look up the cybersecurity. But point is that since we're starting more digitalization, more autonomous ship, which need more communication between ships, between ship and the shore, and among stakeholders. So we will look into more closely about the cybersecurity issues. Very, very relevant to our work. Right. Um, we've only got about another five minutes, and I have other questions. But before I ask my next question, I want to ask, has anyone in the audience got a burning question or comment that they'd like to pose to the Secretary General? Okay, we have a question over here. <laughs> Mr. Kitagi, Secretary General, good, good afternoon. My question is, you have been using frequently in your discussion, autonomous ship. Autonomous ship, if it is also includes uh, unmanned ship, then I think it is a bit far in the distance because we have heard everywhere artificial intelligence and digitalization, but nowhere the word has come cognitive technology. Without cognitive technology, unmanned is out of question. It has to be developed first. So what's your view on that? Actually, I, think the media, I think the media will probably call them robot ships at some point. <laughs> so uh, it is uh, quite a lot. As I mentioned, it takes uh, some time because it needs uh, a lot of uh, technological development, including communication, data management on board and uh, also with the show up. So there is a, that's why there is a several step of uh, autonomous level. So we are moving step by step. But this having the uh, chairman lobby raise these issues, I'd like to take this opportunity to express my, our concern respect to the human element, CPRs. Now the CPRs are working on both around the world. They have a limitation to access about what's going on at IMO, but they are concerned. They may be uh, you know, redundant in the near future. Mm. So which may trigger CFRS, you know, uh, de, you know, motivated, there we are concerned. So, uh, but the reality, autonomous ship issues has a different level. Used to be nine level, but at least a four or five level. So uh, it takes time, it move one by one, and also it impacts to the not only ship, also uh, the mechanism on shore and the shipping company. So I hope uh, CPR is uh, working on board the ship and around the world they are uh, relieved, concentrated their own uh, on a job, not to, to uh, in order to avoid any you know, navigational accident. Right. Thank you, Chair. Any more questions? Because if not, I want to ask you one other question, which is this. Has anything you've heard today surprised you in terms of the discussion or encouraged you? I mean, what do you make of the discussion we've had so far? Uh, actually, I was uh, surprised because uh, <clears throat> uh, 
uh, we have been facing uh, a lot of, uh, in a way, like uh, not positive comment actually from industry, particularly respect to the implementation of uh, uh, sulfur, low sulfur issues. However, I have uh, met uh, a few the uh, delegates here, but I had a very positive impression from comment uh, from them. So they are very keen on the value of uh, low sulfur issues. And in order to remove uh, unnecessary uncertainties that they mentioned, uh, we shouldn't change the implementation date and uh, should be a level playing field with the global implementation of a global standard very uh, properly and in a way more stringently. This is a response I heard. And at the same time, uh, I was a bit uh, happy and uh, surprised. Many of the uh, delegates are thinking already future the shape of international shipping technically, policy, economically. So uh, I'm very, very surprised, and that's why I see a great value of this uh, global, very first global maritime forum. Uh, and uh, from you as well, I uh, was very much impressed uh, by your comment uh, this morning. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> well, those are very positive messages to end on in terms of the future-focused nature of the debate. Um, and any other message you want to give? The yeah, group? I have just uh, uh, one message. We are talking nowadays, shipping is shipping. Uh, but we think shipping should not look at something isolated. You know? So shipping is believed to one of a crucial part of a global logistics supply chain. So there should be, should be good cooperation shipping and the port industry in terms of uh, technical issues, environment issues, safety issues, and uh, this, the information sharing issues. There should be good collaboration. But uh, we are very happy to see there has been good progress in terms of communication and collaboration between shipping and port industry. We are talking about the future ships. Should be, must be good collaboration, common understanding. So well, really, I'd like to take this opportunity to, to thank to the all the port uh, industry. And uh, here we have a uh, main port industry, uh, GTO Hutchison. <laughs> so uh, luckily, we have been uh, maintaining good communication. We will uh, looking forward to more closer cooperation, communication. Again, I'd like to finally, I'm really grateful to the uh, industry representative so positive contributing in terms of implementation and in terms of participating in the process of developing IMO regulation. Really, thank you for your good cooperation. Right. Well, I think that's a call to arms to try and not just collaborate, but to join up the dots and to do so in a really connected way. Yeah. Um, and also a call to arms to do some more talking, which I think everyone is now going to do over beer and wine and dinner. So thank you very much indeed. <laughs> and... <laughs> Thank you to all of you for participating in what's been a great day of discussion, a very rich day of discussion with lots of different issues. Um, we have some fairly complicated um, logistics for this evening. Um, the gala dinner is going to be tonight at 7.30 at the Sky 100 Observation Deck at the International Commerce Centre. Um, the events will be starting again tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. There is information on the shuttle buses and the transportation up on the screen right now. So have a look at where your different shuttle bus information is. As I say, it's a little bit complex. Um, apparently, there are a number of lost and a lot of lost items at the lost and found desk. So if you have lost your notebook, bags, money, phones, everything else, I don't know how you're going to identify your money, but if you've lost that, there is some money sitting there somewhere. So. Don't all rush at once, but you can reclaim any items from the registration desk. And it just remains to me to say thank you very much indeed to all of you for a great day's discussion, and thank you once again to the Secretary General. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you.